Hey movers, welcome to our first flight of the warrior practice. Let's take a moment to bow in, uh, so gently closing your eyes, drawing your hands to chest, thumbs between the eyebrows. Uh, take a moment to acknowledge the qualities of the yogi within, uh, the capacity to surrender and accept that which is. Lowering the hands, open your eyes, placing the hands forward, forming a triangle, uh, bowing your forehead into the space, and uh, we say us, acknowledging the qualities of the warrior, uh, the who stands up and fights for what they can change and do not accept. Let's rise. Establish yourself in a down dog position. <coughs> now for this class, I expect you to be warmed and primed, right? So we can just jump right in to the juicy material. So establishing your down dog position, rooting through the heels, chest, melts towards the toes. Maintain an external wrap and press through the shoulder girdle, pressing in to the thumb and index as you externally rotate through the arms. All right, this is the foundation of your handstand strength. All right, it all begins here in our down dog. We're moving through uh, a version of section one from Budokan Primary Series, just spiced up a little. So. Pay close attention, there are going to be differences in nuance. Mount your down dog. Right? Ankles drive forward. Everything maintains throughout your, your down dog architecture. Right? So feel that again, root through the heels. Chest maintains melting towards the toes and drive the ankles forward. Now posterior tilts, gaze towards the navel as you round and roll. Press and protract. Right, move through a plank with shoulders over wrists. Now find your leaning cobra, right, which is essentially a leaning plank. Right, cobra hood is engaged. Palms are pressed and fingers are active. All right, so big cobra hood, shoulders over fingertips. Now, this is where we're going in a different direction. Begin to hover the knees. As you glide back, hover the elbows. Right, it's known as a horizontal squat. <coughs> now notice you can be high, as in the knees are roughly about a foot. Look for depth, so hover the knees as you open to the shoulders. All right, lower the knees. As you externally rotate through the arms, lower the elbows, gaze forward. Uh, this is called a rocking dolphin. So as you rock forward, maintain this 90 degree architecture in the arms to find your chaturanga. All right, cinch in through the core, posterior tilt of the pelvis. Yeah, rocking back. All right, so this is this <coughs> kind of child's pose variation. The forms are based. Rock forward, maintain that 90 degree architecture, chaturanga. Really, what I'm looking for is elbows over wrists. Glide forward, glide forward, wiggles far forward as you can go. Rock back. Good, last one. Rock forward from our child's pose into our chaturanga, right, a kneeling version. Now, I'm gonna challenge your strength here. Hover the chest. Good, press up halfway to a true chaturanga. Now, press up three quarters of the way. Descend halfway, true chaturanga. Good, and press up all the way into a kneeling plank variation. Press and protract. This is straight arm scapular strength, right? This is where we're developing our fu fundamental understanding of recruitment for our handstands. All right, so posterior tilt in the pelvis, core strong. Find your lean here. As we find our lean, slowly externally rotate and bend through the arms a quarter of the way down. 
So we're in a three-quarter position, press up to our plank, our kneeling plank. Externally rotate as you bend, halfway down, right, into our true chaturanga. Perhaps glide a little further forward. Good, press up. All right, we're making our way down. Smooth, easy does it, all the way down to hover and rock back onto the forearms. Gaze back towards the toes, hover the knees. <clears throat> now, a little nuance here. As we extend the legs, right, I want you to rock into your plank and extend the arms. Perhaps finding a spinal wave here. Right, so, as you extend, press and protract. Let's feel that again. So, from a horizontal squat, as you extend through the legs, you round and roll to find this leaning cobra hood plank. That's what I call it, right? Or leaning cobra for short. Good. Draw the chin to chest. Draw the feet towards the hands to elevate the hips. High in the balls of the feet. And glide back. First, establishing your mounted down dog. Chest melts towards the toes. And then root through the heels. Beautiful work, certainly warming up the internal core. Okay, moving on. Mount your down dog. Generous bend through the knees. Gaze forward. Extend through the legs, finding a leaning cobra. Now, I want you to slide the toes. All right, skid them across whatever surface you're on. Slide and feel that pull power to step into a squat. That may have been a little bit messy, or as you curl up your yoga mat, whatever that looks like. All right, that's okay. Reset, reestablish. <clears throat> Driving the elbows towards the knees. Take a moment here in your squat position. Knees are rocking over the toes. We find this melting and opening in the hips. As you extend through the legs, fingertips are going to base gently in front of you. <clears throat> Swivel the toes forward if they're not already there. Extend through the legs. Now, I encourage you to wiggle from side to side through the hips, uh, feeling sensations in through the back line. Good. Start taking a bend through the knees. Right, the placement of the hands is roughly the distance of your forearms. Now, find the nook. This is what I call the nook, where you connect the knees right behind the elbows. So you're on the inside of the patella, and you'll find there's like a little space station. I call it, you know, like just how a space station docks. Right, I call it the nook. Right, so you need to be bent through the arms to find it. If you're straight, you're not going to have a nook. So externally rotate, bend, and find your connection. Now, once you find your connection, it should feel pretty sturdy. All right? Now, the lean, right? All the arm balances uh, require this lean. This is how the legs become light. So find your lean, find your lean, draw the elbows towards each other, find integrity. <coughs> Press and protract, cinch in through the core, spider grips. Perhaps one heel to toe is available, and the second heel to sit bone. And you're flying in your bent arm crane. Take a smooth, easy breath. All right, this can look like a supported bent arm crane, or even just this leaning bent arm crane with both toes down. Whatever's available in your practice. But in order for things to float, you got to lean, right? The leaning is how you fly, not any kicking up, all right? Rebase the toes, extend through the legs, a moment here and an active forward fold. So place the entire palms on the mat, bend as much as you need to in the legs to establish that connection. Allow the head and neck to relax and feel traction through the spine. Begin to press through the palms, gaze behind you, 
and begin to extend through the legs, right? Whatever you got, rock onto the heels, rock onto the hands, rock onto the heels, rock onto the hands, right? Find this active forward fold here. It's okay, you, your legs might be generously bent. It's okay, whatever you got, looking for that length in the back line. Now, extend to the back line into this little fingertip position here where perhaps you've got just four little fingertips on the mat. Flex to the toes, lengthening further through the back line. A little bit of balance here. Perhaps you can even play with floating the fingertips. Oh yeah, good. Begin swiveling the toes towards each other and base. All right, so we're in this uh, duck position. Find your forward fold here. I know it's awkward and weird, but that's where the magic is, right? The places that we don't often visit in our bodies. Rebase the hands, swivel the heels towards each other, rock back. Now we're in this pigeon position, right? Feel what your forward fold is like in this position. Allow the upper trunk, the neck to be heavy. Right, inviting any subtle wiggles to settle in and feel the dark corners of that which we do not explore. All right, nice final little swivel. Big toes connect, heels are connected. Spinal undulations. All right, generous bend the knees. Cinch into the course, the upper, the up, round the upper back, excuse me. Now begin bridging the hips forward, maintaining this curvature in the spine as you begin rising, bridging the hips forward. Right, stack through the lumbar, the thoracic. As you elevate to staying position, anterior tilt to the pelvis, scapula squeeze back towards each other, chin gazes upwards. As you hinge, fold, and release everything towards the mat. Good, again, let's feel that undulation. Perhaps adjust the feet to something that feels a bit more natural to you. For me, it's more of a hip width distance. Generous bend, cinch, rise and roll. Nice and slow, looking for the nuance and sensation. Perhaps places you haven't visited before. As you stack through the cervical spine, anterior tilt, open the space between ribs and hips, gazing upwards, right? Anterior tilt of the pelvis lead the way, scapula squeezing towards each other. Ribs and thighs connect and release it all to your forward fold. Palms press, a little active forward fold here but to reset. Lean to the hands, press the shoulders, extend through the legs. Maybe a little rock back and forth here. Good. Generous bend in the knees. It's rise to standing. Rise and roll. Fist pump yourself at the base of your spine. Elbows drive back. Right, proud through the sternum. Posterior in the tilts, in, tilts in the pelvis to cinch in through the core. All right, perhaps a little squirming, a little bit of rotation to open up through the shoulders here. All right, another couple of sweet breaths. Are you squeezing, excuse me, squeezing the elbows back, right, while you depress and wrap. Now, interlace the hands at your coccyx. Right, begin hinging at the hips. Finding a little interlace forward fold. Now the key little nuance here is take a generous bend in the elbows. Avoid hyperextending and locking out the elbows like this. Maintain a bend in the elbows. As you look for sending the fists overhead, right, or forward. Uh, constantly checking in with the bend in the elbows and driving the fists out of the socket. Good, taking a couple sweet breaths here. Right. Always allowing yourself to 
settle in and explore these little containers that we, we inhabit for a moment. Releasing the arms, forward fold. Now the opportunity to fly here. So drape the hands forward about uh, a forearm's distance. Find your nook and dock the shins. Lean way forward. Engage your spider grips. Draw the elbows towards each other. Right, you may be here. This is version one. Perhaps you can draw one heel to sit bone. If you're feeling sturdy, both heels to sit bone. Right, this should feel stable for you to fly like this. This is the mother of all arm balances. All right. All right. Establishing a sense of stability and comfort in here is really what we're looking for. Good. Without rocking back, reach the toes back to base, nice and soft. All right, a little shuffle here. So we base the hands close towards the toes and shuffle back to just establish yourself on a good position in the mat. <coughs> now, hands are going to return right outside the feet. Now what I'm looking for here is going to be stepping back into Chaturanga in an incredibly slow and precise way. Right now we're just kicking back and flopping onto our bellies, right? So what this is going to require, fingers are spread, spider grips, right? So slide the fingernails in towards the hands. Extend through the arms and externally rotate, right? Begin rocking forward into the balls of the feet so you're in this big protraction here. Now, externally rotate as you bend in the arm. Right, notice there is not much there. It gets really hard. Rock back into the balls of the feet. So as we bend and start lowering, we're going to extend one leg back. This is going to give us a little bit more room to start lowering into our chaturanga. But the key purpose of this is really sending as much weight as we can forward. Because right? that's where floating and flying really takes on that quality of levitation is the lean forward. It is absolutely essential. And people, I don't think, understand how to access it and understand the challenge it truly is. So, let's find it. Hands are spread. Ex extend through the arms, lean. Right, so you're in a straight arm, essentially like a lalasana variation. Externally rotate. Now, as you lean and bend, extend the left toes back. Continue to lower to a, a true chaturanga, right? 90 degrees in the arms. Extend the right leg back. Holding in your true chaturanga. Good. Press up three quarters of the way. Right? So between a chaturanga and a plank, lower uh, a quarter of the way down. So we're hovering off the mat. Good. Press up true chaturanga halfway. Press up three quarters. Good. Press up. Plank position. Should feel like a rest after all that hard uh, bent arm strength work. Alrighty. So here we are. Last time. Glide forward. Head goes as far forward as you can. Externally rotate and bend through the elbows. Alright. Through those three checkpoints onto the belly. So it's the slowest, sweetest chaturanga you have. Knees drive forward, right, cobra roll to up dog. Up dog to down dog. Moving into our sequencing. Uh, big toes connect. Demi point smears as you extend the right leg, slowly elevate to a three point down dog. Right, heel to sit bone, mount your three point, draw the knee in towards the chest without changing a thing. Round and roll, drive the knee towards the tricep. Now, this is where it's going to get a little bit unique and special. Right, swivel the back foot so you're uh, rooting the blade edge right laterally. Now, find the nook, knee to elbow. 
right? This is going to take a little bit of shuffling to find your correct position, right? So you can have a four-point base in this architecture, right? Where we're looking for that the little nook that we're finding in our Bentham crane. Okay, so version one is four points supporting that, right? Here. Now version two, you can look for a three-point base transition, whether it's lifting a heel or lifting a hand and playing with that. Perhaps it's lifting a heel and a hand. Right, the key component of this is driving that elbow back into the knee. And you may want to swivel a little bit the head a little bit laterally to find more of an established base. Remember, use whatever base points you need to support this transition. I know it's going to feel weird in the beginning, right? But we need to develop this kind of, it's a supported air baby. And it's a beautiful way to start accessing this intelligence, right? With floating with one side of the body. Now, press out of the nook, elevate the knee towards the ceiling and step on the outside of the mat, just like that. Square up the hips. Now, the right hand is gonna lift and circle forward. Rise up onto the fingertips of the left hand. Stack through the shoulders and find a revolved, extended side angle. Now, right hand, that's the overhead hand, is gonna draw and reach back. Hover the back knee, find your balance here, posturing up to revolved lunge, right? Stacking through the spine. Swivel through the arms, so a water wheel transition, moving through uh, a, a crescent lunge variation. Back heel spins open, adjust the lead heel so you have the heel to arch alignment, arriving in our warrior two. Warrior two, pivot on the feet, staying low in the hips, horse stance. All right, double block. Here's our signature Budokan transitions showing up. Double block, hands draw to chest, pivot on the feet, establishing our warrior two, and leaning into our deep reaching warrior. Third, right hand bases. I like to tent them, press up and out, stack through the shoulders. Left hand reaches back, circles towards the ceiling. Right, use the tricep knee connection to twist through the spine. And then find your extended side angle, lengthening through the side body. Gaze towards the left fingertips, square up the hips. This little moment, rather than squaring up the hips, excuse me, we're rotating onto the blade edge. Right hand fully bases. Now, wiggle that foot to the position where you can find the nook. Maybe you need four points to base. Maybe you can experiment with three. And can you find this supported uh, air baby? Now we square up the hips, extend the right toes back, finding our leaning cobra. Slow, mindful descent, pausing your true chaturanga and lowering onto the belly. Go cobra roll to up dog, anterior tilt, posterior tilt, guides the undulation. Right from up dog, chin to chest, press, rise, and roll, and tucking the toes, returning to our down dog. Beautiful work. So, that little moment that the key arm balancey moments are that supine. Uh, excuse me, the supported air baby. Big toes connect. Smear the demi point, finding flex tension in that left leg, and slowly elevate. Heel towards the sit bone. Mount your three point down dog. Draw the knee through the midline. As you glide forward, press and protract. Rotate on the blade edge. Right, it's almost like you're setting up for a Komodo crawl here. Now, base all four points as you need to, to bend the lead arm, find your nook, draw a heel to sit bone, all right, and looking for balance here. Perhaps the right hand can now base two. What, what movements do you have here as we hold and develop the stability strength in a single arm architecture? 
with whatever supports we need, of course. All right, if all this feels impossible, just uh, connect knees towards the wrist and hold some sort of version of a lunge. Good. Now, from the support air baby, hinge at the knee, knee towards the ceiling as you step on the outside of the hand. That's meant to be really tough on the lateral side body. Hands are going to switch base as you screw up the hips, right, stacking through the shoulders, finding your revolved extended side angle. And now I'm actually circles forward as we stack through the shoulders. Left elbow drives back, hover the back knee, posturing up, right, finding your balance, revolve lunge. Circling through, a crescent lunge variation. Back heel spins open, warrior two, pivot on the feet so you have heel arch alignment. Staying low as you can, pivoting on the feet, horse stance, double block, double block, deep reaching warrior. Left hand bases, gaze back, begin circling through, find the stacking of the shoulders as you twist through the spine. And then find length through the side body. Still gazing underneath the armpit there, reaching through the fingertips. Good. Squaring up the hips. Looking for our supported air baby here. So left hand remains the base hand. Rotates onto the, the blade edge of the right foot. Find your knock. Ensure that you're bent in the arm to find the knock. Right left heel to sit bone if you're able to do that. Maybe those are connected. Heel to sit bone if you can. Right hand floats if you can. All right. Noticing what type of integrity you have in this architecture. All right, a little swivel from side to side. All right, no point do you straighten that arm. Rather, right, the bend is how we have the architecture to support the knee. Square up the hands, square up the hips. Left toes connect with the right, leaning cobra, press and protract, slow descent, halfway, all right, to our true chaturanga, rock a little more forward, and descend, all right, onto the belly, gaze forward, self-practice here, cobra roll to up dog, up dog to down dog. Let's move into our cool down. Grab some cork blocks. <clears throat> We're moving through uh, an active puppy. So face the blocks long ways down the mat and tent the hands. Right, so the entire hand is, is on the mat. Wiggle the knees back, roughly to line under the hips. Press into the fingertips, externally rotate through the arms, and with that activation, melt the chest towards the mat. I right, always encourage a little exploration. All right, little swivels, little squirms to deepen right, into what we call containers of movement. Now release onto the forehead, wiggle the hands off the blocks. <laughs> Base the left hand, thread through the right. right so we've thread through the, the right hand through the left needle. With the right foot cup over the left Achilles. Right, it's just like a little grip. Rather than having the feet randomly sitting here, I like to actually find this little bind. It feels good in my body. Well, choose your own adventure. And then, rather than threading through, think about connecting the elbow and knee and using that leverage here to create more thoracic opening. Well, it's going to be opening to the entire spine, but there's an 
often a deep thoracic opening. The left hands, the overhead hands, tent them and spider crawl them to the midline of the mat. All right, this is going to help facilitate a much deeper spinal opening. Release the spider crawl. Transitioning through your tabletop. Switch the crossover in the feet, so switch the bind. All right, first thread through, base the shoulder, connect elbow and knee, and use that as a little torque to create this, the start of the spinal rotation. And then spider crawl, right hands towards the midline of the mat. Releasing the spinal twist, we're establishing a full point base. <clears throat> nice, easy lower onto prone. We'll transition onto our back, so circle the right arm forward so you can swivel to right side body. Scissor step the feet and adjust yourself onto your mat, onto supine. Final little activation here. A little bridge in the hips. Interlace the hands. Roll onto the shoulder heads. And bridge through the hips and opening through the shoulders. Beautiful. Release onto your back. If any final pose that you need for your practice, please go ahead. Uh, otherwise, finding your Shavasana. Uh, this is a true opportunity for you to let go of something. What are you dying to today? Uh, we need to empty our cup in order to expand, in order to stay fresh. And this is facilitated by deep, long exhales as you surrender to gravity. Uh, allow yourself to melt into the earth. Uh, surrender everything. Please remain here as long as you need. Uh, you have put in the effort. Uh, now it's time for you to restore and relax your nervous system. Uh, thank you for joining me for this practice. I hope it served you in your growth and development. Namaste. Enos.